Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in women worldwide. Most cases of cervical cancer are caused by a virus called the human papillomavirus, or HPV. Recently, registered nurse Linda Champa met with a cervical cancer survivor who's making it her mission to help eradicate this highly preventable cancer. Hi. Three years ago, Allison Hicks Hi. was diagnosed with Hi. cervical cancer. Hi. Sort of, I guess, numb and su surprised. The doctor um, was had the speculum in. He was looking at my cervix and just said, Allison, I can, I can tell you this is cancer. Um, I can see tumors all over your cervix. Each year, more than 11,000 women in the U.S., like Allison, learn they have cervical cancer. Close to 4,000 die from it. Cervical cancer is caused by a virus known as the human papillomavirus, or HPV, which is transmitted sexually. But HPV, that virus is a very ubiquitous virus. It's, it's present widespread in both women and in men. PAP tests have been used for more than 50 years to screen women for cervical cancer. The American Cancer Society recommends women begin screening within three years of having intercourse and no later than age 21. So before somebody starts to have symptoms of cervical cancer, um, and those symptoms would be bleeding and intercourse, pain and intercourse, um, you want to be able to catch the changes that are happening within the cervix before they advance into an invasive cancer. Just months after her treatment, Hicks started the Hicks Foundation. It provides cervical cancer screening for women who need financial help and education about HPV and the new vaccine against it. The vaccine does not cure cervical cancer. It prevents you from developing HPV virus. Surviving starts with knowing. The only way to beat this cancer is to know about it and not get it. Trials show the vaccine can protect against 70% of cervical cancers and is safe for girls as young as age nine. But the vaccine is not without controversy. Some say it may send the message that sex at a young age is okay. And it's unknown how long the vaccine is protective. If, if you have a young child who's about to become sexually active, um, then it's certainly worth considering uh, to do that. To give, to give her the vaccine because if one does develop an invasive cervical cancer, that could be potentially deadly or at least make somebody infertile. Hicks always dreamed of having children, but her cervical cancer was so advanced, doctors were forced to perform a radical hysterectomy. Hicks says she'll always mourn that loss, but her work to help wipe out cervical cancer is healing. I think being proactive and changing the world. I, I always hope to change the world. I hope to change other women's lives. For Accent Health, I'm Linda Champa. Even with the vaccine, it's still important to be screened for cervical cancer because the vaccine does not protect against all types of HPV. Right now, a relatively new screening tool called the HPV DNA test is available for patients 30 and older. New research shows in combination with the PAP test, the HPV DNA test is virtually 100% sensitive in detecting cervical changes. And for more information about the works Allison Hicks is doing in Vermont, log on to her website at freepap.org. And for more information on cervical cancer, visit the American Cancer Society's website at cancer.org.